they're passing out a sheet of paper. They're passing out a sheet of paper for everybody because you know I haven't done a, a, a setting like this. I've talked to many schools. I've talked to college kids. I've talked to high school kids. I've talked to Rotary groups. I've talked to churches. I've done a lot of talks. First time I've been in an environment like this, but I'm passing out a sheet of paper because I want everybody. You got a you got a choice to make. I, I'm I, I got two options. I got a dull, boring talk, or I got a quick, good one. Which one do you want? Quick, quick, quick and good. Okay, so, so we'll do that one. But, but what I need you to do, and it's not for me, it's for you. What I need you to do is you got a sheet of paper. Hold me up, something right with. If there's anything you hear, anything you hear, take some notes. Take some notes because I'm going to share about 20 minutes worth of information. And I promise you it could be a game changer. Okay? It'll be a game changer. Okay? But again, it, it's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of my story. A lot of people want to know, how, how did I buy a car dealership at, at 35 years old? And has that happened? And I'll be the first to tell you, it's definitely with faith. It's not necessarily abilities and who I knew. My dad's a roofer. He's not a car guy. I'm from Miami, Florida. I'm not from Georgia. So how did all these things come together? I'm going to share that with you a little bit today to hopefully inspire you guys because, look, every last one of us in the room, every last one of us in the room, okay, are made to succeed. Um, this young lady was talking, called her mom, said, Mom, I know I haven't talked to you in two months, and I know you're probably nervous, but I want to let you know I'm okay. Uh, what happened was the fire started and began in the dorm room, and everybody was freaked out. Mom, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Everybody was running around and so forth. The fire was coming up the stairs. I couldn't get out. So what happened is it came into my dorm room, okay, and burned the bottom part of my legs. My only option was to jump out. So I jumped out, Mom. When I jumped out of the four-story building, I broke both my legs and, and, and my pelvis. But there was a nice guy down there that was able to help me out and actually stay with me until the ambulance came. For some reason, we got to know one another. He's been in the hospital with me. He stayed with me, and he had some affinity for me, and, and I've really grown to love this guy. Well, I don't know him very well. I've gotten to know this guy. I just got out of the hospital, went through four surgeries, and I think I want you to know that we're getting married as well. Phone was silent for a minute. Then she said, Mom, I'm, I'm just kidding. None of that really happened, but I am failing college. All right, so she, she's telling a story about perspective. Of course, her mother's on the other line probably thinking, what in the world are you doing? But she wants to drop the bomb that she's actually not doing well at school and try to set her up for her perspective change. And so when we're talking about success, we I want to ask you a question. What is your perspective on success? Like, what does that mean to everybody in the room? We know it's subjective, right? To some people, success is making a lot of money. That's a very small perspective, but that's what people think. Some, some people's perspective is just being a great dad, being a great husband. Your perspective on, on, on success is going to be the game changer whether you succeed or not succeed. And, 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 and growing up in South Florida, i got to tell you, if you don't know what success looks like, how can you get it? If you've never seen it, how do you know how to do it? That's a big, big situation. You know, your mentality is a huge part of life. There's some people that say, i got to take 100 shots to get better at basketball. There's other people that say, i got to make 100 shots to get better at basketball. It's a big difference. One guy out there shooting his 100 shots, he's done. You holler at the other person, hey, I'm on 63. I got, I got uh, 37 more shots to go. What's your mentality about succeeding? You know, you, you, you can learn a lot from people in any area. You can, you can sit and listen to somebody who's been successful in some arena and learn a lot, take a lot of notes, right? You should be a student of life, not just a student of class. You should be a student of life, right? It's all relative. It all comes together. I don't care if you're 17, 18, it doesn't matter. Eventually, it all comes together. But if you don't take notes on the people that succeed, and also take notes on the people who don't. Do we know some people in your life that have not been very successful? Could you learn from what they did and not repeat it? Yes or no? Yeah. You don't need to go to a seminar <laughs> and figure out what is he doing to succeed. You could go, you got a seminar at your house, probably. But what not to do, true or false? Right? So be a lifelong, be a lifelong learner. Okay, the, the, the power of perspective. I want to tell you the power of your words. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a faith-driven guy, and I'm not ashamed to tell you that. And I think the power of the tongue is so, is so, so strong. All right? Uh, pay attention to the conversation you have with yourself. What do you say to yourself? Some of you, if you had a, if you had a friend that talked to you the way you talked to you, you wouldn't have any friend very long. Amen. It's very important to pay attention to the self-conversation. 
A lot of people will say, you see someone walking down the street, you're like, man, that dude's crazy. He's talking to himself. Guess what? Don't know we all talk to ourselves? Because I'm talking to you, you're talking to yourself right now. Check him out. I'm figuring out what you're thinking right now. That's how we do it. Right? Pay attention to the words that you use. You see, words create pictures. Pictures create emotions. Energy and action always follows thought. That's how powerful a word is. In the beginning, God said he created the heavens and the earth. He spoke it. Words are pretty powerful. Very powerful. So when you're talking about success, there are levels of success. I think there are, right? Look, the very first thing is you've got to be able to see you got to be able to see something for yourself that's not really there. If I had a bag of seeds, and I said, look, these are seeds, here's a bag, and I wrote apple on the out, and I said, what is that? What would you guys say it is? Apple, apple seeds, right? Somebody that can see something big, somebody that can see the big, they say, that's not apple seeds, it's apple trees. They want to see the tree. Mm -hmm. Having a vision, having a vision of what you want for your life can happen at 18, it can happen at 28, it can happen whenever you choose to have it, having a vision. Right? Very, very important. There's a big difference between being blind and having no vision, right? Right? Eyesight, mind sight. Sometimes people go too much on what they see. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I, whatever I, you know, seeing is believing. I think believing is seeing. When you believe hard enough, you start to see exactly what you want. And what you want to focus on is, like I said with your words, you say what you see. Let me say it again. You guys say, and I say what you see. What comes out of your mouth is what you see in your mind. So very important to understand how, how important your words are. <coughs> I want to let you know how important that information changes situations. Um, how do I put it? If, 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 you, if you're looking to succeed, right? Let's say you're in a classroom setting. And, and let, let's just say a uh, student here, Charlie, sitting up front. And Charlie's doing make good grades. You're not making good grades. Chances are good if you got with Charlie. Could he share with you some information on how he's making good grades that may help you? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. See, information can change the situation. Information changes the situation. So the question is this. Who has the information you need to get you where you want to go? Who's got it? I don't know that answer in your life. There's somebody that's got the information you need to get you where you want to be. You get the information, you change the situation, all of a sudden your life can change, right? And I'm going to tell you personally how much that's, that's impacted me. Write this down. This is a game changer. You guys don't have to do this if you don't want to, but the man's name is Eric Thomas. Anybody heard of him? Raise your hand. Nobody heard of Eric Thomas? Good. Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas. YouTube Eric Thomas. This, this brother's from Detroit, Michigan. He's a high school dropout. Uh, I've never met a guy in my life. But I'm talking to you to inspire you to another level, and guess what? I gotta get fed too. So I look for people all the time that can feed me. This guy's this guy's a real deal. This guy, from where you guys want to go, getting a GED, getting a second shot, moving forward, this guy's right in your wheelhouse. There's a reason why I selected this guy for you to write down because I want you to listen to what this guy has to say. He's got tons of YouTube videos, five minutes, three minutes, thirty minutes. You can listen as long as you want. You don't have to listen to anything. But information can change the situation. No college degree. I wanted to be a teacher and a football coach, but I wasn't going to make it in the NFL. <laughs> Got no degree, can't, can't teach, right? And I'm working at Lowe's. So my buddy calls me up and says, hey, man, I want you to, to come work at Chili's. I said, man, this is my steady. I can't give up my $1,700, $1,500 a month. I got to have this. You know, he said, well, come over and see what you can do part-time. Well, I didn't like talking in front of people. and didn't want to wait tables. So I go over there as a, as a bus boy. I said, I'll do part-time, whatever the case. So I'm working two jobs now. So I run into a guy that was from Miami. I didn't know at the time he was in the car business. He was a finance director. He'd come in to, about the third time, he'd ask for me again. He said, I want to talk to that kid from Miami. I want him to serve me. His name was Carlos. So he says to me after coming in three or four times, once you get in the car business, I'm 20 years old at the time. I said, man, I would never sell cars. He was a crook in the car business. I would never sell cars. He said, I'm telling you, you should come sell cars. I'm like, no, I'm not selling cars. War on me, war on me. I said, I'll try, I'll try. I'll try one summer. So I went down there, sold cars. And from that point forward, just kept learning and growing and looking for new information. When I got in there, I found a salesperson. And I didn't know. I, I was making $2,500, $3,000 selling cars. And honestly, man, I, I was rich. I, I mean, I was smart, 36 grand. I'm in. I'm all over that. I'm, I'm in. Until I meet this guy, Steve Shax. About 60 years old, sits at the desk, never moves. And he sells 30 cars a month, 35 cars a month. And I said, like, I said, man, that's like a statue. What does he do? He makes about $100,000 a year. I said, what? 
I'm like, what? A hundred grand? I couldn't even see that. <laughs> if you can't see it, you can't get it. I couldn't see a hundred thousand dollars. It wasn't even in my range of thought. If you can't see it, you can't get it. I mean, Steve Shad, it's an information changing situation. Is that what I said? So, I got my pen out. Steve, talk to me. What do you do? I'm writing everything I can write as fast as I can write. Why? Because you made 100 grand. I gotta make 100 grand. I don't know who you are, but you ain't giving me up. You cut me, I bleed like you do. How do you make 100 grand? I want to know. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm starting to buy books. I can't even read very well. I can't even read very well. Couldn't stand to read in front of the class. I couldn't read that well. I'm buying books. Why? A hundred grand. I started to see this hundred grand. Those seeds became trees. I started to see it. And I started making four thousand dollars out of it. Fifty two hundred dollars. And I'm going twenty years old. Then I started finding out well, what's the finance guy name? How much? And the salesman did. Man, hey, what does the general manager make? Mine was blown. Couldn't wrap my head around it because I never saw what success looked like. So what I'm sharing with you is there's no reason in the world that a 20-year-old kid from Miami, Florida, with no parental supervision can get in the car business after load trucks and waiting tables, which is probably jobs y'all have had or maybe even have to do. Ain't no wrong with it. Can get in the car business, not have a clue. No college education. Wasn't that smart, I promise you. Can climb up through the car business. And there's only one reason why. Number one, my faith in Christ. Number one, that's the, that's the big thing. What anything I did, what he did, number one. But I will tell you this. It was me seeing exactly what can be done. And listen, talent is God-given. The skill is developed. I may not have been that talented in the car business, but I could develop, beat the crap out of my skill. I beat it up. Every book, every tape, every CD, every seminar, I was broke. And I still, it didn't matter what it was. I was going to buy that book. I'd read it, study it. Every other, every other person, what you've got to understand is in, in every industry, in every workforce, there are some lazy people. Would you agree? Yeah. See, that, that, that levels the playing field so big, it's ridiculous, because if you choose not to be lazy, you're going to succeed. It's not so much your talent or your, or your ability. It's everybody does the status quo. It used to be, you know, way back in the day, we worked as hard as we can to get as far as we can. Now we work as little as we can to get paid as much as we can. Right? So with the mentality of people shooting 100 shots, I'm trying to make 100. you shooting 100. I may shoot 300. I'm making 100. I shoot 300 days, you shoot 100. I'm going to be better shooter than him, I promise. I'm going to beat my crap. Does that make sense? Yes or no? All right? It ain't that hard. Success leaves clues. I'm dropping some clues. Okay? I, I, I don't know everything. I'm 40 years old. I don't know everything. Okay? I, I, I'm just learning. But I can tell you the belief not show me and then I'll do it. I said, look, I'm going to do it and then I'm going to see it. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to go for it even though it could be embarrassing and I could fail. Because I failed, never made me a failure. And I failed a whole bunch. Michael Jordan will tell you, he missed way more shots than he ever, than he ever made, right? If you don't take them, you can't make them, right? So you want to know what you have in common with, Le with LeBron James, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, we all got one thing in common. You know what that is? All of us. You know what that is? I don't know. 24 hours in a day. All of us. The difference is how do you use your 24 hours? No matter who you are, we got the same 24 hours in a day. So you can get up, class at 9, roll up in here on two wheels at 8.57. And you can get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Start beating your crap up. Reading a book. Maybe write a book. Some people say, I can't write a book. Why not? I don't have the time. Really? Get up every morning at 5 o'clock, write one page. At the end of the year, how many pages you got written? 365 pages? You ain't got time to write one page? You can't get that to an editor that's smarter than you? Say, hey, here's my words, here's my thoughts, man. See if you can craft something out of this. Take 365 down to 80, 90 pages. You're an author. You're a game changer. You're on Amazon. Why not? Because you believe the story that someone told you you couldn't five years ago, ten years ago, and you bought into it? Because I can tell you, I had tons of haters coming up. I still got a bunch of them now. I had tons of people that say, Louie, come on, you're so cute. You're so young. You never gonna buy. How are you going to buy a car I said, I don't know. I don't care. That's what I'm going to do, though. Proverbs 3 5 says, Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. He goes right to the path. I don't worry about the how. Does that make sense? I don't worry. I don't get cut. If you're trying to strategize to the point of paralysis analysis, you're never going to move. You're never going to move. Right? 
And we're going to talk about that in a second. So we want to be a game changer, right? That, I'm going to let you listen to You guys know who Tyler Perry is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to listen to this real quick. Let's see if this thing will work. All right, let's see if this thing will work. This is what Tyler Perry says about, about his success. I think it's pretty, you know, again, what do I tell you? Success leads clues, right? It's a pretty, it's a pretty good idea to listen to folks that have been there a little bit. That's what I'm thinking. You know what the question is that a lot of people ask me all the time? How did you make it? How did you make it? Well, I tell you, there's <clears throat> only one answer for that. And I, I say this in press all the time, but people you will cut it out of articles or they don't want it printed or they don't want it said. But the truth be told, it was nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God. You can plant seeds all day long. You can go around giving your business card to people. You can go around knocking on doors and auditioning. You can do all of that every day of your life. And nothing, there are time, for most people, nothing happens. When a seed is planted in the ground, all you can do is water it. You cannot control the sunshine. You cannot control the weather. And you cannot control whether the locusts will come and try and destroy it. All you can do is plant your seed in the ground, water it, and believe. That is what allowed me to be in this position right now. I would not stop believing. I planted my seed. I worked really hard. I had one idea, and that was to do a play. All the other stuff came. My only idea, my only focus was to do my one play. And I knew if I could get that to work, everything else would come to pass. There are so many people who go in so many directions. They, this week they're doing this, and next week they're doing that, and next week they're doing this, and next week they're going to be in real estate, and the next week they're going to open a salon. And those, those kind of people are all over the place, and I usually try to get them to focus. Focus on one thing, one area. Put all of your energy into watering one area. If you spread the water across many, many seeds, you don't have as much water for one seed. So focus on one thing. Make it your priority and stick with it no matter what. No matter how many people told me no, no matter how many people lied to me, no matter how many times I put the show up and nobody came. Uh, I remember when I did my very first show, I worked my butt off and saved $12,000 tax returns from H&R Block money. I saved it, worked hard, saved it myself, rented the 14th Street Playhouse, put that show up, thought that... Uh, uh, 1,200 people would come over a weekend and 30 showed up, and I knew every one of them. But I didn't stop. That didn't deter me. That was in 1992. Uh, 93, same thing happened. I, I, 94, 95, 96, 97, up until 1998. Same devastation of nobody showing up in the audience. I was doing one show a year, working with different promoters, trying to get the show up, and nobody showed up. But I didn't stop. And my, 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 what I say to you now, looking at me now, here, I am a human being. There's no difference between my humanness and your humanness. The only thing is, if you're trying to get there, you cannot stop believing in any way. No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody tells you, you have to know it beyond knowing it. And it is a, it is a feeling when something is for you, this is how I knew it was for me. When something is for you, there's a feeling that is deep down inside of you that will not allow you to let it go. You have, it, will, it will keep you going when you can't even keep yourself going. That's why the mantra here at the Tyler Perry Studios is a place where even dreams believe. Because there comes a time in your life where you've worked and you've stressed and you tried to get there and you couldn't on your own. But you have a dream. And that dream has to take on the belief for you because you can't do it by yourself. So what I would tell you is this, don't stop. Narrow your focus to one idea, one, and make it work. That will give birth to all the others. All you can do is plant the seed and water it. God himself has to give the increase. Only God can make the sunshine. Only God can bring the rain. But if you've planted the seed, then you've done your part. I wish you so much success in 2012. Anything you want is possible. God knows I'm a living witness. Please feel me. Please hear this from my heart. Anything you want is possible. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't take the time to send this message to you. Take care of yourself. So, 
Tyler Perry, I don't know how much how much money he made or how, how successful he's been in, in his movies, but you're talking about basically 2000, it's 2014. You're talking about it in a 14 year period. See, a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people may, may you know, like I said all the time, you know, look, I, I spent my whole life being an overnight success. I spent my whole life being an overnight success. A lot of people see, see the, the glory of a business owner, but, know, but, but don't know the story. Y'all have a story. Y'all have a story. The fact of the matter is, every last one of us in the room, every last one of us in the room have some brokenness. Have, have, have a scar from daddy, have a scar from mama. Okay, and we believe something about ourselves. We got our own little map, right? Our map is our, is our belief system. It's our filter. It's how we see the world based on our faith, our belief system, our parents, our upbringing. That's how we see the world. And if people don't see the world like we do, they got a problem. The problem is your map is just a small part of the territory. There's a whole bunch to learn, and understanding yourself and knowing yourself is a huge part. And, and I want to mention that to you in a second. But he mentioned something about a dream, and I want to tell you the difference between God's dream and your dream. I don't know if you know the difference. But when you have a dream, and, and when I say dream, I mean there's something inside of you that you want to accomplish and do. It may not be huge and grand, and, and grand you know, to, to whatever level for you, and it could be huge. When you have a dream, it comes and goes. Now hear me now. When God places a dream on your heart, it never goes away. And every time you get mad, like, oh, I should. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. And you hold back and you hold. And that fear consumes you. And the fear is, is false evidence that appears real. It ain't really real. And that fear cripples you. I had fear that I couldn't read. I wasn't that good in math. Y'all, I'm being, I'm being 100. I'm, I'm keeping it as real as I can. I really felt like I was at a disadvantage academically. But I could play football. And I could talk to ladies. That's what, that's what I, that's what I uh, thought my pride was. But I, I wasn't that smart. But, I, but I'll tell you, you got to focus on that stuff to make sure you have that, that high sense of urgency. Now, here's something I want you to write down. Four quick things, okay? Law of the A, and then I'm done. Law of the A. A is an apple. You know, you all heard that where it says that an apple a day does what? You know, your philosophy, your philosophy is so critical in, in, in succeeding in life, your philosophy. Like, if I ask you, what's your philosophy, could I take it, could I package it, could I put it in a book, and can I go around the country selling it, yes or no? And if I couldn't package your philosophy of how you live your life, why not? And if you could get better, the question is, should you? So these are the questions you've got to ask yourself, because at any given moment, you can make choice and you can change. Law of the A, the first one is awareness. Write that down. Awareness. Awareness. You can't grow yourself unless you know yourself. You gotta get gut level honest and realize who you are. One of the things I am, I'll be real honest with you, it's hurt me, but it's helped me. I'm one of those guys that just I like to be liked. I, I kind of do things for other people's approval. I'm just being honest. That's a fault. If you're doing things in life to get other people's approval, you could do some things that may, may not be right because you look for someone to, to like you. That could be a problem. Some of you may have the same issue and understand and relate what I'm talking about. But the point is, if you don't know who you really are, you know, like you really don't, like if I can tell you, like I got, I, I got a bad temper, right, and sometimes I may flare up. If I deny that to myself, I'm never going to repair that temper, right? I, because I'm not being honest with myself. So you got to have awareness. You've got to know yourself if you're going to grow yourself. It's kind of like the law of the lid John Maxwell talks about. You're only going to grow to the knowledge you have. So unless you're aware of more information, more knowledge, you'll never get past where you're at. You'll never get past it unless you acquire more information, more knowledge, right? The next one is action. I'm talking about the law of the A. Awareness, the next one is action. So I like to say you can't win unless you begin. You cannot win unless you begin. TAN is the acronym I like to use. TAN, take action now. If all else fails, take action. That's how I've been in business my whole life. I may not make the right choice, but I promise you it's going to be full speed. It may not be the right one, but we're going full speed. We're going to take action. We're not going to sit on the sideline, okay, and make and make butt prints on the sidelines. We're making footprints on the field. I'm going for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going for it. And every time you let the fear consume you and you don't go for it, okay, that's one more opportunity of time that you can't get back, all right? And, and we know our days are numbered. All right? The statistic is 100%. We all want to die, right? Y'all know that, right? Amen. Right? And when the game's over, all the pieces go back in the box. You don't take them with you. That's right. 
Right? So, so you got to get everything you got every day. Every day. Taking action is part of that. The third one's accountability. Accountability. You got to do a good job keeping yourself accountable the best you can. Accountability to do the right thing. Okay? Because we know that habits is what creates success. <coughs> you got to lose the habits you have. And the last one's attraction. I know that sounds kind of weird. But what you think about is what you bring about. You attract to you everything in your life. You are where you are based on the decisions you've made. And you attract it to yourself. You don't pursue success. You attract it. Remember I told you at the very beginning, if you can't see it, you can't get it? You see it. You eat it. You sleep it. You drink it. You, can, you bring it to you. You want to know why things bad happen in your life? Because you're probably thinking about things that, it's me, you know, it ain't going to work. Seven times again, I've always tried. I've never had it. You bring it right to you. The very same thing you fear, you're taking it right to you. Law of attraction. It's a real thing. Like law of gravity. What happens when I drop a pin? What's it going to do? 100% of the time. God has universal principles he put in place. You know the only one where if you give, you should what? It's universal. It works every time. I can tell you tithing stories after tithing. I can tell you stories. It is a universal. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you like it. No matter if you pray against it. All laws of the universe are in place from gravity to the law of attraction. You are attracting to yourself exactly what you want. And unfortunately, what you want is a lack of self-confidence you're bringing to you the very same thing that you're hoping doesn't happen. I'll finish with this last story. I really want you to write down and, and look at some YouTube video with Eric Thomas. I really want you to write the name. He came in there. I want you to write down his name. Is Eric Thomas. Thomas. Yes. Oh, I, I really want you to because uh, he tells a story about a guy that wants to make money. Anybody heard the story? Yeah, I've heard it. Okay, a guy wants to make money. He calls him the guru. So he says, I want to, I want to learn, get, learn how to make some money. The guy says, okay, meet me at the beach at 5 a.m. I said, okay. So he goes to the beach, got a suit on. He's at the beach. He's kind of odd. He's wearing a suit. The guy gets there and he says, okay, come on, follow me. We're going through the water. The guy said, man, I thought I was here to make money. I'm not here to be a lifeguard. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to swim. I'm here to make some money. He says, you want to make money? Follow me. So he takes him out. It's five in the morning. He can't see. He gets into the water. He's a little nervous. How about life? Sometimes you really can't see what's in front of you. You can't do it. You can't see what's going on. All you got is faith. Sometimes you get into the water, you get a little scared, don't you? Yeah, that's where he was at. He was scared. He said, what are we doing? He said, come on, follow me. He takes him in. He says, about shoulder deep. The guy's like, man, what are we doing, man? For real, I come here to make money. I'm in my, I'm in my suit. This is ridiculous. So the guru takes him and boom, dumps him under the water, holding him down, holding him down. The guy's like, man, what's going on? In his arm, he said, man, if I just stay in the water for just a little bit, maybe he'll let off. He got him on the water, holding him and holding him. Finally, he's about there about a minute. Now he's starting to freak out. So he's freaking out. He's trying to get up. Finally, the guru lets him up. The guy gets up. Ooh, man, what are, you, what are you trying to do? Kill me, man? And he looks at him, and the guru says, listen to me. What did you want when you were down in the water? He said, I want to breathe. He said, when you want to breathe, as bad as you want to succeed, then you'll be successful. You want it that bad. When you want it that bad, yes. then you'll be successful. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave you with that thought. You guys can do a dress rehearsal and come in here every day. Play the part. And unless you want it as bad as you want to breathe, you're going to keep perpetuating the same thing you've had. You're going to keep getting it. You're going to blame somebody else for it. Because the choice can be made every day, any given moment, to change the game, right? How many people does it take to change a football game? How many people? Takes one person in the fourth quarter with three minutes left. They're trying to stall the clock. They throw the ball. Guy picks up the phone, runs the other way. All of a sudden, we got to pick six. We got to change ball game. One person can change a game. One classroom can change the city. 